after a very busy couple of weeks surviving winter in our tiny VW camper van, we decided to slow things down, ditch van life, and see whether or not cabin life would be a more ideal way to enjoy winter in the Alps. You join a couple of confused beans this morning <laughs> as we are making our way deep into the mountains to go and get ourselves a cabin. And <laughs> on the way here, we accidentally took a wrong turn. <laughs> and now we're on a train. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, as we pulled up to this road, we had to go through a toll booth, and I thought, 27 francs, that seems expensive for a toll road. Maybe it's a scenic road. And then the next thing we know, we're driving onto a train. Our Google Maps has reduced our destination time by about 30 minutes. So I guess we're gonna get there much quicker. But yeah. we had no idea that we were going onto a train. This is so funny. <laughs> this is the best accident of money I've ever spent in my life. <laughs> this is amazing. Where are we? I don't know, but it's a fairy tale wonderland out there. Look at it. I want to recommend this, but I don't know where I am <laughs> I or what I'm doing. <laughs> must be just deep, deep into a mountain. How the hell they make like, this shit? I feel like I must be in like a coal mine or something, yeah. you know, it's weird. 20 minutes later, we popped out the other side of the mountain where we disembarked the train and continued driving for another hour through the gorgeous Swiss scenery to our cabin in the snow. Last year, we actually ditched the van again in the winter to go and stay in a cabin because there was a massive snowstorm when we were in Austria and we had to escape it. This time's quite nice. Different we're circumstances. Doing it under very different circumstances. We're doing it out of choice <laughs> completely. The weather is beautiful. We just fancied a cozy stay in a cabin because last time it turned out to actually be one of the highlights of our trip. from the front room. Oh, is that the kitchen as well? Whoa. Oh, this is cool. Wow. We're in. Oh, it's cozy in there. Wow, look at the view. <laughs> I guess that's, that's why you're here, right? <laughs> we found this place on Airbnb and on the outside i think it's a traditional sort of shed like farm shed and the guy that owns the place is an architect so he's modernized it from the inside i feel like it's like a jane bond villain's lair from out here <laughs> it feels like a lair actually having just like the little holes there like i don't know what's above me right now i feel like i'm in a lair i can't work out <laughs> what this what's is going on There's so oh, many wow, doors there's like a mini balcony thing out there We've got a hammock, which is always nice. Oh, it's a bedroom in there. It looks like maybe that would be the kids' room, hence why they've got a little climbing wall and stuff here. A <laughs> climbing wall, what? <laughs> so I'm guessing our room must be upstairs. Again. I can't figure out the lights in here at all. It's very confusing. Nothing seems to work. I'm just hoping that we could. There we go, now they can see it. <laughs> yeah, weird. Just a lot of buttons that don't do stuff. Buttons that don't do anything. Oh well, it's a pretty cool room. But yeah, it's very minimalist and very um, dark. So I guess, <laughs> yeah, very dark. <laughs> I guess, um, to be fair, it's probably not that different from the van because we've got the blackout blinds in the van, so it's going to feel exactly the same. We've got a, a little window. <laughs> it's a child size window. It is kind of weird, the MDF has become like, I don't know, like in some places I feel like they use it like it's really trendy, but isn't it like the cheapest, nastiest wood you can buy? <laughs> I've definitely, I've been into like festival bathrooms that are made out of this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it smells much nicer than a festival bathroom to be fair. You can tell that we paid for this place ourselves <laughs> because <laughs> we'll say whatever we like. <laughs> and uh, some things are good, some things not so good. 
I do think it's really cool how they turn something that I would guess would just be kind of abandoned or used as storage or something into a livable space. Yeah, this view is mad. It is, isn't it? What is a little mouse? Oh wow, that's the happiest I've been to see a little mouse <laughs> in a long time. Where is he? There he is. No! Get out of my house! <laughs> After your always. Look at him! This one is the cockiest little mouse I've ever seen. We have a beautiful calm sunset here in the mountains. The snow makes everything so, so quiet. Everything was going so well until I realized I left my wine in the van and I've already gone back to the van to go and get some stuff and I forgot the wine. And obviously you could say, Alex, you don't need to drink, there's a lovely sunset. And to that, I would wildly disagree because I think some wine and some cheese in this setting is an absolute must. <laughs> One thing I just love in general, especially being from a cold country, is uh, when you're outside and seeing all these houses with their lights on and it just looks so warm and inviting. And just to be able to walk back to this place. And I have my loving fiance over here, chopping cheese. What a lovely thing to come back to. Hello. Are I'm you chopping meat and cheese? Getting you some snacks. I thought that as we're in Switzerland, we really should try raclette. So I thought tonight would be a good night to have it. Oh, with what? With potatoes. Oh, I think man. that's traditional. But I think you typically would have like pickles with it, like um, pickled cucumbers and stuff like that, which we don't have. But quick wardrobe change. Yeah, welcome to cooking with Emma in her PJs. <laughs> um, so we don't have like a proper raclette cooking thing. So I've decided I'm just gonna put a shitload of cheese in this pan and just put it under the just grill. Melt it. <laughs> well, that seems right. I've never had raclette before. I'm very, very excited. We actually bought this in France because it would be a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks so soft. I just want to poke it. Oh god, so it I stinks. Will. <laughs> oh wow. Woo. Le Pong. It is Le Pong. Honestly, if you could smell this, you wouldn't want it. <laughs> it does smell like feet. Like it's sticking out the whole place. Humans are mad, aren't they? Because at what point in history <laughs> were they making this? And they thought, yeah, I need to put that in my mouth. <laughs> it's just a big plate of boiling, bubbling cheese. <laughs> oh my God, that's so scoopy. Oh my God, that's insane. Oh my goodness. Outrageous. That is crazy good. Mm. <laughs> it's just so much of it, it's so stringy. <laughs> I'm feeling very lucky that it is another beautiful day here today because a little thing about me is that I operate quite well when it comes to streaks. I am currently on day 57 of doing 10,000 steps a day and Emma can't come and join me. So come rain or shine, I end up doing it no matter what. But if I was to not do it for one of those days, I will definitely fall off the wagon and I won't do it again for a very, very long time. So I always try and keep it up. For people that watch this channel, you might realize that we release a video every single Monday, basically without fail. That is just another one of my many streaks. So today I'm going for 
about an hour hike up into the mountains to go and get my steps to eat my lunch with a view and just get out and have some of this lovely fresh air. I'm loving these traditional structures here. The wood is so big and thick and aesthetically it's just very, very pleasing. It's very cool that the place that we're staying is just a repurposed version of this that isn't in use anymore. It's crazy how big this mountain is over here. So we didn't even get a glimpse of the sun as it was rising over here until about 11.30. Then it was hid behind this mountain all day, only poked out over here about an hour or so ago. And you can see it's not even that far from going away again. <laughs> I know daylight hours are short in the mountains, but it still surprises me. And uh, you only have a few hours to pounce to do anything. And I already feel like I've left it a tad too late. I've taken a wrong turn, so this seems as good a spot as any to stop and have lunch. Embarrassingly, I have definitely taken the wrong route, especially with the light already dipping. And I'm trying to hit my step count for the day and it is very slow <laughs> when I'm going uphill, obviously, in the snow. So I think, I think after I've had food, I'm gonna make my way back down and just aimlessly walk around the streets like a loser. Done. I really wish that I didn't have to be so black and white and I could play in the grey area but I know myself too well and if I don't do these stupid streaks I don't do it at all and it is at least nice to feel accomplished every day that I've done something for myself. I have to ask is anyone else weird like me? Do you have any streaks? What is your longest streak and what is it? I am now currently on my longest streak of 10,000 steps a day, 57 days in a row. It won't be long now until sunset, so time to go back and relax. Hello. Hello. Would you like a hot chocolate? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I just made one for you. What, how did you know I was coming? Because you messaged me to say that you're always back. <laughs> <laughs> I also asked for hot chocolate. <laughs> had a dribble nap. The best kind of nap. <laughs> it is the best kind of nap though, because you know you've had a proper nap if you've had a good dribble. Yeah. I have to say, the view from here is outstanding, obviously. However, living in a van, you can get views like this for free. <laughs> it is possible. You just have to know where to park up. I'll view in Austria last year that was stonking this was too far off it yeah yeah exactly and it was free which was an added bonus but it has been really nice just to sort of stretch our legs have a bit of space to be able to cook wash up we have a dishwasher that's been really nice <laughs> such a novelty i think when you live in a van for a while you appreciate things like flushing toilets and dishwashers so much more <laughs> it's kind of nice to have that break just so you can get that appreciation back for those things. I think one thing that's really stood out to me that's so different this winter than last winter is the fact that being pregnant means that I can't do any of the really fun winter activities which made winter van life so fun last year. Yeah, you're a right boy now. Oh, it's so rubbish. <laughs> I can't ski, I can't toboggan. I discovered tobogganing last year, which is apparently the most fun you can have on the snow. <laughs> but I can't do that even. So that has been really hard this year, but still, I think having a lovely cozy cabin with an epic view is a pretty good runner up. The best thing about sunsets is that they never get boring, yeah. especially if they're actually nice. <laughs> <laughs> and in a nice location like this, I mean, it's pretty 
hard to get bored of. Yeah, I don't think you could get bored of this view ever. No. I, I do love that they've put the front room in the section with the big open windows leading out to this view. All the rooms above basically have no windows. Yeah. <laughs> but having that space with that view so you can actually enjoy it from the warmth of inside the cabin has been really nice. a bit sad to be leaving Switzerland today because I feel like we haven't been here long enough you know like a lot of our trips we do go away for like a longer time and really get to like get a sense for the country but I feel like this has been such a fleeting visit and if it wasn't for being so bloody pregnant and having appointments to get back to we would probably stay for longer yeah definitely this is gonna be somewhere we'll come back to yeah, for sure. Oh, we'll come back with the baby. How weird will that be? Luckily, van life makes Switzerland so affordable. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know why, but it really bothers me when I haven't even checked out yet and they've come to try and do the cleaning, even though I still have 20 more minutes here. I paid for those 20 minutes, so now out of principle, I'm going to take them all. Because <laughs> that's the kind of guy I am. I really did enjoy that break from the van. I'm equally as excited to get back into the van now for the journey home. It's funny that I haven't left the cabin since we arrived. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you've walked up and down this probably about 20 times. <laughs> I can always play the pregnancy card, you see. Like, yeah. Oh no, we left X in the van. I am very pregnant. <laughs> Hello, old friend. Hello, I miss you. Yeah, you might have to open this door. <laughs> Thank you. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like some deer have been near our van. That's cool. We were sad to be leaving Switzerland so soon, so we decided to have one last night in the Swiss mountains before the long journey back. How is that for a free park up with a view? I don't even miss the cabin at all. No. <laughs> this is so nice. I love the website Park for Night. We've mentioned it many times in the past just for you to find awesome spots. This one's really cool. And obviously we have all the mountains over there. And then we are right next to the river running through the valley. <laughs> this place is actually a paid parking site, but because it's the weekend, it's free on the weekend. And there's no one here, clearly, on the weekend. Maybe because it's so snowy, <laughs> so most people aren't like us and think that this is a good idea and want to do this. But to have it all to ourselves is so exciting. And I just love the camper van and van life so, so much. I love the places it gets us to. It's always different. It's always exciting. What a fantastic end to our time in Switzerland. I think we managed to do pretty well at fitting loads in. I love how they've invented so many ways to have fun in yeah. the cold out here, yeah. like the hot tug boat and the igloo. <laughs> <laughs> this was definitely one of our favorite trips in terms of the balance of staying in the van and staying in sort of alternative accommodations. Yeah, we stayed in the end in three different accommodations on this trip and I think for us, going forward this is definitely a way of traveling that we really like the camper van get us into these awesome places we love staying in the van but also by having these little breaks it makes us so excited to get back into the van mm -hmm. and explore more a lot of creators do suffer with burnout and this is a way to protect ourselves yeah if we do have these little breaks as we go along. Yeah, and it just helps us to not get sick of the van. You know, I think there's only so much time you can spend in such a small space without going completely insane. Especially with a hormonal <laughs> pregnant lady. Excuse Guys, me. Guys, <laughs> come on. I think it's time now to give me a lot of praise for putting up with Emma. <laughs> You've or... actually done such a great job in this trip. But also, it's time to give Emma a lot of praise for what a badass bitch this woman was. <laughs> pregnant and doing all these cool activities. So to conclude, 
We of course prefer van life to cabin life, but really it's the combination of everything and doing a mix of everything that's the real winner. We are now heading back to the UK and we've got some exciting content coming up, so make sure you hit subscribe for that future content. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a big fat thumbs up and let us know down in the comments below what would you prefer personally? Would you like van life, cabin life, or a combination of everything? And it has to be one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> You can't travel any other way. Anyway, nothing left to say. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. And beans, beans out. out.